In this video we are going to look at Gantt Project. This is an open source product that is freely available on SourceForge. It is a project scheduling and time management tool that can generate both Gantt and PERT charts. It can also generate reports in PDF and HTML formats as well as importing and exporting to Microsoft project formats. In this tutorial we will look at the workspace and how to create a project in this product. This will include adding tasks, adding resources, as well as covering the basic functions available in Gantt Project. We will also look at viewing and exporting reports to different formats. This is the interface of Gantt Project. Like most Windows based applications, we have our menus across the top and a shortcut toolbar just below. This will become useful when we begin working with the product. Gantt Project is a tabular product. As a default it has two tabs, Gantt and Resources Chart. However, a third tab, PERT Chart, can be shown. PERT Chart is an illustration of the project as a network diagram in which you will be able to view activities and milestones as well as a critical path. The PERT chart tab can be shown by selecting View, PERT chart. This will add a new tab next to the Resources tab that shows a PERT chart of your project. You will notice that when we switch between tabs that the shortcuts on the toolbar change in line with the change in tab. You will also notice that there are two main views. On the left hand side there is the Details pane and on the right hand side there is the calendar pane. This is the same for both the Gantt and Resource tabs. There are two main ways to navigate the calendar pane. You can either use the buttons to move from side to side or you can use the mouse to click and drag to move. To zoom in or out we can also use the buttons or use the scroll on our mouse. You will notice that as we zoom in or out the degrees of date change from months to weeks and years. There is also the ability to jump to certain parts of your project using the little drop down box. This can become very useful when navigating through longer projects. There are also options to show the critical path and to create a baseline for the project. To help explain the project creation process in Gantt Project, I am going to take you through creating a project covering the basic functions incorporated in this product. The first thing we need to do is to input our project details. This can be done by going to Project and selecting Properties. We can then input the project name, the organisation it is for, a link to the project's website and a description about the project. Before we add the first task, it is recommended that we first add at least one resource. This can be done by any one of three ways. Either by selecting the Resources tab and right clicking in the Details pane and selecting New Resource, or by clicking the shortcut on the toolbar, or by going to Resources on the menu bar and selecting New Resource. You will notice here that there is an option to import resources. This may become useful when creating multiple projects while using the same resources. So once we have selected new resource, we can then add in details of this resource. It is recommended that you add in contact details as this will prove useful later on. You will notice that there are two tabs, General and Days Off. If we go to Days Off, we are able to insert holidays for this resource. These will show as holidays on the calendar and will not be worked on by the resource. If we go back to the General tab, you will notice that we can also assign a role to the resource. Currently, the only role in the system is Project Manager. More roles are able to be added though. So once we have added all the information for a resource, click OK and the resource is added to the resource chart. To create additional roles, we can go to Project properties and then on the left hand side select resource roles.
Then by clicking on the next free slot and typing we can add in new roles. These will then be available when adding a new resource. Similar to adding resources, there are a number of ways to add new tasks. One can either click the shortcut button on the toolbar or go to Tasks, New Task. Once you have clicked New Task, the task is automatically added to the Details pane on the Gantt tab with the name highlighted. We can then change the name. We can also change the start and end dates by double clicking on them. This is a small amount of information currently. To get into the task properties, we select the task and can either click the task properties shortcut on the toolbar or go to tasks and task properties. Or right click on the task and select task properties. In this window we can edit a number of the properties of the task. We can change the start and end dates or set the duration to be a certain length of days. Please note that the smallest time unit is a day and so task duration cannot be defined in terms of hours. We can also set the task to be a milestone meaning it is a state rather than a task to be completed. We can also create an additional constraint on the earliest start time. This is useful when a project is running ahead of schedule, however a certain task still cannot start until a certain date. We can edit the priority of a task and update the percentage complete as well as changing certain graphical options. You will notice across the top of the window there are a number of tabs. If we click on Predecessor we are able to add tasks that are required to be completed before this task can start. We do this by clicking Add and then by selecting in the drop down box the task that is required to have been completed. If we click on the Resources tab, we are able to assign resources to the task. We can do this by clicking Add and selecting our resource from the drop-down box. The details for this resource will then come up and we can then assign this resource as the coordinator for this task or change the percentage load this resource will take for the task, meaning that a task can be shared between multiple resources. Since this task now has a resource assigned to it, if we go to the Resources Chart tab, you will be able to see that our resource has assigned tasks. If we click the little plus sign, we can see the tasks that are assigned to this resource along with the days that work is required. There are a number of ways to delete a task. We can either right click on it and select Delete Task, or select the task and select the Delete Task shortcut on the toolbar, or go to Tasks and select Delete Task from there. This is the same for deleting a resource, except, of course, we must be on the Resources tab and have the resource selected. Firstly, I am going to add in the roles that my project team has. These roles could be anything. For example, I have chosen External to be a role signifying someone who is not directly in my team. Then I am going to input my resources, so I add in my team members I am also going to add in external entities that have a role to pay in my project. I have also put in contact details. This will come in useful during the project. I then start to add in my tasks. Notice that I have indented using the arrows in the details pane. This is useful when wanting to define subtasks under a larger task. I ensure that all the properties of the tasks are correct. However, this is not essential as you can go back and edit them at any time. I also add in the resource allocation for the task. 
choosing the coordinator and if there are multiple resources, sharing the load between them by changing the units column. Also note, when a predecessor is chosen, the task on the Gantt chart automatically moves and a link is created between them. So as you can see, the Gantt chart shows the project as a whole. And if we go onto the Resources chart tab, we can see the resources allocated time as well. Note the colour coding to signify when a resource is overloaded or underloaded. The default is set to red for overloaded and green for underloaded. You may also observe that weekends are not set as working days. This can be changed by going to Project, Properties, and then selecting calendar on the left hand side and you can choose whether weekends are worked on or not and you can also load a holiday calendar as well. If we go back to the Gantt tab we can indent subtasks of tasks using the arrows as well as moving tasks up or down. If we select two tasks by holding down the control button and clicking the tasks we can add or remove dependencies. This is another way, additional to that of defining them in the task properties, that we can add dependencies between tasks. We can change the appearance of the calendar pane of both the Gantt and Resources chart tabs. This can be done by going to Edit and Settings, then selecting either Gantt chart or Resource chart. If we click on Gantt chart, we can change the settings for the calendar pane of the Gantt tab. We can add in a red line to show today. We can add in lines to show the start and end of the project, as well as changing how tasks appear over weekends. We can also change what references appear around the task by selecting from the drop-down boxes. If we select the resource chart settings, we can change the colour of overloaded and underloaded resources. To change the appearance of the details pane, we can right click on the top of the columns and select Manage Columns. This allows us to add and remove certain columns from the details pane. We can do the same thing in the Resources Chart tab. At this point, if we click Show Critical Path, the critical path of the project will be highlighted. Also, if we go to View, Pert Chart, we can now view a Pert Chart of our project in the Pert Chart tab. To export, we go to Project and click on Export. As shown, there are a number of different formats to export to. If we select PDF Report and click Next, we are then able to choose our destination folder and the dates between which the report applies, along with other cosmetic settings. If we then click OK, Gantt Project will generate the report. As you can see, the report is laid out neatly and is well presented. It contains information about tasks, resources, and shows a snapshot of the Gantt and Resources chart tabs between the specified dates. If we wanted more fields to show on the report, we would select for them to be shown in the Details pane under Manage Columns. This is the end of the tutorial. Not all the functions of Gantt Project have been covered by this tutorial. However, 
Hopefully it has still helped your understanding of the product. Thanks for watching.